Today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to tackle the last major flower bed in the patio area. Stay tuned. Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we are going to plant this last remaining major space in this patio surrounding flower beds. We have been here a lot of times before. You have seen this space and I am excited to finally get this bed planted. So just as a little recap, remember the space that I am talking about is this area um, underneath the forest pansy all the way up to the metal edging of the walkway with that connects our driveway to the patio area. Again, we've been in this space before because the bed that is under directly underneath the forest pansy is an existing bed. It's been there for years, um, really ever since we planted the forest pansy, which was like, uh, I was pregnant with Jackson, so that would have been 11 plus years ago. Um, and so this bed has grown and developed. We've tweaked it many times before, but when we put in the pathway from the patio to the driveway area, we knew that there was really no point in having any of this grass because one, the grass here was always terrible. Um, and two, to mow it would just be a really kind of a big pain. So <laughs> Jenny's always going to be open for more flower beds. So we just decided to extend the entire flower bed from the forest pansy all the way up to the metal edging. Everything in here is either going to be shrubs or perennials. Um, again, this soil was absolutely horrible. It's that red clay soil. If you remember when I planted the annuals that are just directly across the path, how horrible it was. In that case, I did not amend the soil a couple of different reasons. One mainly was because I was by myself. It was hot. I just wanted to get them in the ground. They were annuals. I knew that they are not going to stay there long term. When we do put in the plants that are there long term, we will amend the soil then. As a side note, they are doing amazingly well and look fantastic. Um, but because this is going to be all perennials and shrubs, we went ahead um, we had a couple of days of good rain, first of all. So the red clay soil was looser and a little bit easier to work with as opposed to if it had been completely dry. But we came in here and Jerry has a handheld tiller um, that's small and can fit in here because yes we have the big equipment but this is a tight space in order to get in here we could mess up the metal edging so we were having to do things by hand. Um, so he used the handheld tiller just one to first kind of scrape up and break up the, the soil any kind of old leftover grass it got that up and then we came in here and just socked the land and sea compost to it and the aged pine bark fines. When we did that, on top of the soil, the native soil that was already um, tilled up, we created this beautiful, fluffy um, planting space for these perennials and shrubs that are going to go in here. So again, we used a ton of that land and sea compost, the aged pine bark fines. Aged pine bark fines, you will notice, um, are truly what they say they are. They are pine bark that have um, been aged, so they're not fresh, so they've already kind of gone through a little bit of the decomposition process. They provide the aeration for our clay soil because that's what we deal with with clay soil is that things can get compacted and you have a lot of water retention where we want to kind of help aerate that soil and get the water to be able to flow through freely. But you can see, I mean, the soil now is absolutely beautiful. He did come back through. Um, we had the shovels and we went through and went and um, kind of took the shovels and got in there. And basically you just stand in there and pull it up and flip it. So you're bringing in some of that native soil up and you're also bringing in the compost and the pine bark fines down. Now, of course, when we plant this, we will use the handheld auger. So again, that just brings in more aeration. 
incorporates all of these great amendments to the soil down into your native soil. So when you have a massive area like this that you are going to be planting in, it really is best to amend the entire space. You're not just going to amend the hole, we're amending the entire bed. So that way, um, just the, the entire growing space has the same nutritional um, and physical composition as everything else. So the water will flow through the same throughout the entire bed. Um, now the fun part is that my mama is going to help me plan this space because I have a ton of plants that honestly have been like recycled plants. They were in here or they were somewhere else in our gardens and I know that I want to use them in here. So we'll probably actually end up moving some of these guys out. We're just gonna have fun. I honestly don't really have a clue on how it's gonna completely um, look at the end, but for me, that's the fun of gardening and that's where I have the joy of gardening with my mama because um, she is a wonderful gardener, as you remember from her um, tours of her space. So this is a lot of fun that we have together. So she'll get in here. Um, can guarantee you she won't talk on camera, but you'll see a little bit of Mimi in here from a distance. So we're gonna get in here and just have some fun. Now, this planting bed does have some unique situations in that you can see underneath the forest pansy, it is completely shaded right now. It's about mid-morning, it's before lunch. So this space along the pathway is in full sun. The sun comes up here and it will set over there. So behind me, at the back end of the bed, in the afternoon, it will be in the shade, and this spot here will get more sun. So we'll be planting um, some more shade-loving plants up closer to the forest pansy, more sun-loving plants as we move out towards the pathway. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna set the camera up, let you watch us go through the kind of design process and the planting process. And then once it's all done, we will come back and I will explain everything to you and all of the plants that we have used in this space. So let's get to planting. One of the great plants that my mama gave me is this hidden ginger. It is the variety of emperor. And you can see it's gorgeous. It's a variegated, um, leaves on it. I mean, it's just gorgeous color. Clearly, it loves this spot because as you can see, Mama's digging it up. We've already dug up a section over here um, and it has those bulby rhizome type of roots to it. So what we're going to do is this, because it does like it too much in here and it's getting a little bit invasive, shall we say, we're gonna go ahead and take it and use this big old huge black nursery pot. This is a 15 gallon pot. We're gonna put some potting soil in the bottom mixed with some land and sea, and then just plant everybody in this 15 gallon container. And then we will take it over to the nursery and transplant it into a bed over there so it can grow and be happy and live its best life over there. But here it's just getting to be a little too, uh, friendly with the other plants. We're going to go ahead and bite the bullet and get rid of the Japanese anemone. You will remember when I was in this bed back in the late winter, I talked about the Japanese anemone when I planted, oh, just hit my head on a wind chime, on this Florida sunshine. Well, 
Again, we're going to, we're not going to toss these. We're going to relocate them in an area where they can just have their way. But as you can see, I mean, look, look at that, y'all. This is, huh, they're great and they're wonderful naturalizers, but that's just not what we want to have in this section of the bed because it's just, I mean, they take over everything. They're taking over the peonies. Like, look at that. They're all up in the peonies. So, same thing that we did with that emperor. We're going to go ahead and repot them in big containers and move them at the appropriate time. Alrighty, my friends, it is the end of the day. It's like four o'clock. Mom and I have worked our little hearts out this afternoon. I am telling you what, that woman, she is a force to be reckoned with and uh, she keeps me going for sure. We got a lot of good work done. We got behind me, you can see just how cleared out it looks since we got those Japanese anemones out. They look so much better. Um, and then you can see here, we still have a lot of the planting left to do. We just ran out of steam and energy for the day, moving a lot of those um, perennials took a lot of energy and work. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of flip the camera around and just give you a little bit of a brief overview as to what we have gotten done thus far. So you can see that um, we have gotten, of course, all the basically all the plants that are underneath the forest pansy have um, been planted. They're in the ground. We've got the shovels right there. Um, really am excited with how this has turned out. So you can see that we've added, um, get my finger right here, da -da. some more of the sunshine, Florida, sorry. <laughs> Got the Florida sunshines added back through there. We added one on each end. So over here to the far right, there is one. And then where all those Japanese anemones are, there is another one. Remember, the Florida Sunshines are a fantastic evergreen shade shrub. And there's one, two, three, and then four back there. They will grow up and hide these utilities. So that's great. We got all the Japanese anemones out from the peonies, from the ferns, and then all of the hostas have been moved so that they are in this nice sweep of an arch. Um, I don't think there's... There's only one that's, well, we have seven substance, which are the same, and then you have the white feather, which is the same. And then we added, of course, I had the Lenten roses right here. Those two were established and have been there. Then these two were in the bed also, but had been taken out and were in pots. So we planted those there. So again, we'll have a sweep 
of those. What's left is a lot of fantastic, beautiful, some shrubs. We've got some of some evergreen shrubs that are gonna go in here, the jukebox, the blue jangles, the white pugster butterfly bushes are gonna go in here, um, the everwillow grass. So we've got a lot of beautiful things left to go in here. Um, but we will wait for another day to get that done. So all I have to do is just keep this well watered. Of course, there's the Hot Mess Express back there. Wouldn't be gardening with Creekside if I didn't show you that. But in a couple days, I will come back and we will finish this job. Good morning, sweet friends. Welcome to day two of planting the bed behind me underneath the forest pansy. Uh, it is going to be a very hot day today. So I am out here. The sun is not even over the trees yet. I think it's like 7.30 in the morning. Um, so I am gonna be out here flying solo for a little bit. Mimi will be here um, later this morning to help me finish up. But my main goal right now is to get all of these plants into the ground. Um, of course, I have my auger behind me. I've got my biotone, so everybody's gonna receive that. Everything is placed where it's going to go. All I have to do is just get the holes dug, biotoned, and the plants in the ground. Now, I'm going to show you a little tip that we use. We learned this from an old gardener friend of ours when we first started doing vegetables for the farmer's market. And um, because we have such high temperatures coming, I think like the rest of the country is just, we're in a heat wave, it's summer. And so, um, we don't have any rain in the forecast, at least for a couple of days. So what I'm going to do is show you a little trick where you're going to dig your hole and we're going to fill it up with water and then plant, put the plant straight in there. I'll show you exactly how we do it. This just really saturates the um, soil. It gives the plant, obviously, um, a lot of good water to begin with. First thing in the morning, it's going to have the heat of the day all throughout this day in the summer sun and so forth and so on so this is just a great way to get those plants in the ground less shock on them um, and then of course once i get the whole bed done then i'll come back and water again just on the top now we are going to put this bed on irrigation but we are having a little bit of a problem finding the irrigation tubing that we want we're not going to use um well we are going to use rather i should say the irrigate it's early in the morning i promise i've had coffee but clearly words are hard this morning um we're going to use irrigation tubing that has emitters already in it like 12 to 18 inches in there can't find it right now jerry is going to go on a hunt for it today so that way we can just snake it through the bed instead of like putting every individual plant on an emitter because there's so many plants in here um so we're looking for that tubing. Hopefully he'll get it for me today. Um, and maybe we can come back tonight and get that laid down and then put mulch on top of it. And then this bed will be officially done. Right now, my main goal is to get all these plants in the ground before the day's heat hits. So let's get going.
y'all ever plant something and think, oh, it's going to look great there. And then you plant it, and you're like, yeah, yeah, not so much. The way I feel about these thinkers right here, so what I'm going to do is I liked how I did them over there, so I'm going to still do kind of the same thing over there. So don't be afraid. If you don't like it, fix it. Change it. It's your garden. sweet friends we are making some great progress I have gotten all of the shrubs in um, right before mama came to help me and then I put her on the task of placing and planting a couple of annuals in here again I really plan in the long run that this will be mostly a perennial shrub bed but there will be little pockets of annuals here and there you know just a little burst of color so I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you those fun little pockets of color. Okay, so here we have, we're coming right off the patio and we have these fun little pocket of these vincas right between the yin and yang and a little quick fire. So I've got seven of them here. My numbers on these guys are limited. So there's seven here. And then I'm gonna do two more little small pockets of three plants each on the edge of the um, sidewalk. So we'll show you those in a minute. But what mama did was she came in here and these are three massive clumps of the Chinook Caladiums from Proven Winners. Again, these were samples that our friends at Classic Caladium sent us. We potted them up. These are gonna be more of a shade Caladium, those kind of traditional but look at the color on this plant. Is it not just absolutely gorgeous? So there's three nice big clumps underneath the forest pansy. Again, kind of in that triangle pattern to bring some interest. Looks great with the hostas. And then we did a, well, mama did, a ribbon of Persian shields kind of starting here. Um, and it's gonna run the entire length of the bed and you can see that she's watering those in right there so persian shield again is a beautiful shade not excuse me not shade sun annual that has absolutely gorgeous foliage on it like look at this it is that purple and green sorry the sun's i'm battling the sun you can see my you can see my shadow um beautiful purple green almost an iridescent look to it will get nice and big they can get 18 to 36 inches tall really fill in and it'll be just a gorgeous um, pop of color throughout the whole bed so there we go I've got to add like I said those couple little pockets of the vincas there's the other camera way hi um, but anyway, it is all coming together and I talked to Jerry and he has got found the drip tube so we can do that this afternoon and get this mulch. But we're just gonna finish up right here. All right, friends, with the magic of television, we have fast forwarded all through the hot afternoon and we are standing here in some glorious shade um, in early evening. It's probably um, about seven o'clock at night and you can see that this whole corner is completely under shade, so this is the perfect time for us to come out here and lay down the irrigation line and get this area mulched so we can be done for, <laughs> I say for good, but you know, that's a relative term. For now, we'll be done. So what we're gonna do is, if you remember back when we were putting in the tea olives and all that, we did all the irrigation and we had, Jerry had trenched underneath the pathway and so we have, um, a PVC line that runs underneath the pathway and pops out um, up there kind of near the Ascot Rainbows and um, so we're going to tap into that. That is all solid irrigation. That line also connects um, the beds surrounding the patio. So this whole system outside will be on one zone thank you couldn't think of the word zone in this area so what we're going to do though is we're going to use this half inch irrigation tubing we talked about this earlier that we didn't have any and jerry was able to find some today but 
the reason that we're using these is because I think you can see, hopefully, this tubing has the emitters built into it. Um, I believe it's like every 12, 12 inches. So what we're going to do is um, just simply cut into the solid tubing with just your clippers and they're going to use these lovely little tees. These um, are from Hunter and so it makes it really easy. You're just going to, um, they just all slides in together. You push everybody together and then this way it all connects and you can do different um, areas so you can have your irrigation line running through that. So we're going to, I'm going to show you up close how we're going to do it. But basically with this irrigation tubing, I'm just going to kind of snake it all throughout this bed. I'm not going to um, per se try to make sure that an emitter is directly on each plant. We're looking just to kind of soak the whole general area because remember this bed has never been on irrigation before and all of those plants that are underneath the forest pansy have been there, um, the vast majority of them have been there for years and have had no irrigation other than when it rains or if I do water them in times of drought. So they're just going to be happy that they're getting water. And then of course down further here um, all the new plantings will be just fine once we get them because remember we got them really well watered in when we planted them. Get this area with some water, the mulch, and they will do great. So we're just going to go ahead and get these guys hooked up to the existing irrigation and snake this all through the bed. So come on. All right, so what you can see right here, this is that solid um, brown tubing that we've talked about that connects the PVC. This black tubing over here is what is going into the patio beds. The black tubing has actual emitters just on every shrub. So what we're gonna do is we've got our T, we've got our clippers. We're just gonna come in here and clip. Take our first T and you gotta wiggle because obviously there's no glue on this. You gotta use your muscles. Would help if you put on some gloves because you know if you got delicate gardening hands it might hurt a little bit. Okay. I'm wiggling. There we go. I got the professional behind the camera and he's giving me pointers. Alright, so does it need to go all the way up or are we good? He says that's good. All right, it is not coming off. So when I lay the pipe down, you can see that I have extra. So I'm gonna cut just a little bit off so that it doesn't bow up on me. So I'm not gonna, and I can wiggle this wire, you know, this some if I need to. It's just gonna take a little bit of off. Come over here. That's the great thing about these irrigation lines, as opposed to like PVC, you don't have any glue involved. All right, more? Does it need to go more? He says no. All right, so there we go. Now I'm gonna take my irrigation tubing that has the emitters in it, and I'm just gonna wiggle it onto here, which is kind of hard because it's still attached to the, um, like it's a big roll of it. This is where you manhandle it. Can't get my grip right, people. Slow and steady wins the race. All right. It may not be the prettiest job you've ever seen, but it's on there. All right. There we go. All right. 
So the tea is in. Now we've got this nice big roll of irrigation tubing that we are going to, um, this is definitely a two person job just because it's <laughs> awkward, and awkward and you will lose your ever loving mind if you try to do it all by yourself because it's twisted up. So we're gonna take the camera, step back and just snake this irrigation line throughout the whole bed so that these plants can get some water. How do you wanna do this? You wind and I'll staple or, or you just walk. Ta-da! They are going. The irrigation line is completely in. Uh, we got it turned on. Everybody is dripping. They're doing a beautiful. Um, these are gonna be some very happy plants here because they are gonna get lots of good, yummy, delicious water. Jerry says that they are, as far as the flow rate on this, it's about, it's a little under a gallon per hour. Obviously, um, once we get this mulched in and everybody gets really watered in, we're not going to have to water it. I mean, we'll water it every day, but not for a really long extended time. Again, the vast majority of these perennials and shrubs are pretty hardy. It's just that this irrigation will give them just that little bit of extra boost that they're going to need during those hot summer months. Um, so I can't wait to see how it just flourishes. But the next thing that we're going to do, the final thing that we're going to do is get this entire bed mulched. Um, that will just make a massive difference. It's, it's kind of like, you know, ladies, when you're getting ready and then you put on that final bit of makeup, that lipstick or whatever it is, it just makes the whole outfit come together. Well, that's what mulch does. So we are going to um, have to use the Bobcat as far as the bucket goes and bring it over here because again, we have this metal edging. We're not gonna be bringing equipment back and forth over here. So we're gonna have to use the wheelbarrow and do some good old <clears throat> manual labor and get that mulch laid. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, sweet friends, this bed is done. In fact, it has been done for a couple of days. We took um, <laughs> a break after we got it, the irrigation laid down and the mulch laid because it was hot. That um, day that Mama and I finished planting all of these plants in here, I think you can tell by those videos there <laughs> just a second ago, I was a little hot and sweaty and I was a little tired. So Jerry and I came back out later that night. We got the irrigation line laid down. We got the mulch laid down. And this bed is rather deceiving in how large it is. Cause we th I thought, oh, we can get that irrigation done and the mulch laid down and it'd be, you know, lickety split. Well, that day was exceptionally hot. And then the mulch took forever, it seemed like to get it laid down because of course we had to do it all by hand as far as bringing it to the bed, laying it down because no equipment's gonna fit in here. So we did it the old fashioned way. 
and to make things even more fun and exciting, there was a giant, I mean, this thing was enormous, horsefly like that kept attacking me the entire night. So by the end of the night, you'll notice we didn't have a whole lot of footage of us doing mulch because let's just be honest, when you're hot and sweaty and tired of being attacked by a horsefly, you don't really feel like being on camera. So we stopped the camera, but by the end of the night, I had like mulch dirt all over me for me smacking this stupid horsefly that would not leave me alone. But it was all worth it because the bed is done. It is gorgeous. It has been, like I said, several days since we were here. As a whole, the bed has responded beautifully. We are now in July, so the heat has hit. They're doing great. There have been, I think, a total of two plants. I think it's two plants only that um, may not make it, and those were ones that were either really tiny or they were ones that we had divided and transplanted. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of give you a general overview, final overview of this bed. Now this is not, Specifically, just talking about, you know, different varieties. Again, inspiration, talking about what you can do if you have a space similar to this. For lack of, you know, in all intents and purposes, this is a half circle flower bed. So let's just walk over here first and kind of go underneath the forest pansy. Remember, this is a forest pansy red bud. This forest pansy, I remember we were pregnant with Jackson. Jackson's 11, so this has almost been here 12 years because, um, and we got it and it was probably a, a 15 gallon, I guess, when we got it, and it is huge and it is beautiful, but I love how when you come underneath it, it's like this whole little secret canopy under here. So I'm gonna tiptoe in the bed just for a minute so I can stand still. Remember in the back, we planted, we have a total of four Florida sunshines in here. These will get nice and tall. These are evergreens, that beautiful lime green color. They will get relatively tall. Um, and so that will help kind of hide some of the utilities in here. So those are Florida sunshines. They are actually a type of anise. So they're just great, great plants. Tucked in here are various ferns. I've got a cinnamon fern back here. Um, this is one that my mama had given me from her garden. Um, again, is it in full glorious glory and display? No, it's all right. It will be next year. Now these are in full, full glorious display. These are autumn ferns. This particular variety is brilliant. So there's three of those back there. And then just really kind of tucked up under here are a whole variety of hostas. So mama and I did these hostas these were all here existing except for the white feather. We added those. But just, there's kind of a, uh, a little bit of a ribbon up under here that's just various hostas. So again, whatever hosta you have, whatever hosta you find, you can use in your bed. Again, just when you're at a nursery and you find something fun, grab it. Speaking of finding something fun and grabbing it, Jerry and I just celebrated our 21st wedding anniversary and so we went to the mountains in North Carolina to celebrate and of course we had to stop by one of the um, well-known garden centers up there and I found this great um, crocosmia and it is it not gorgeous so it is just starting to bloom it has these beautiful orange colors now I know you sweet people do love a good tag so I'm going to show you the tag, because I'm not even gonna try to pronounce what variety that is. But these will get about 32 inches tall, 18 inches wide. It is considered a full sun, zones four to nine. It is a perennial. So this is just a beautiful, fun, whimsical display of color that is here. So yeah, even I, like when we like to go to garden centers, I like to buy plants. It's fun. Um, so also through here, remember we have the blue jangles, let's dance blue jangles hydrangea. This is one that was here last year. It has spent the whole winter in a pot because we knew that we were going to be re reworking this bed. So we dug it up, put it in a pot and it sat here all winter. It's beautiful. It's going to be a nice petite hydrangea. And there are two more in the bed that will mirror that. We've got the Lenten roses. 
just various kinds of Lenten roses, hellebore that are in here. So basically remember on this bed, we work from deep shade in the back to basically full sun in the front. So I can really have a wide variety of plants in here. The sun, again, it comes up this way. So this gets the morning sun and it sets over here over my right shoulder. So this gets early afternoon shade for the rest of the day while over there it gets that hot afternoon sun. So again, this is where it's important for you to pay attention to where your sun is, you know, where does it move within the bed and then plant accordingly. So if you're aware of your environment and then you match the plants to fit the environment, voila, you get a great bed. So then coming down through here, I wanted to use, these are the Pugster white butterfly bushes, nice petite, full sun. They're going to be a two by two fantastic butterfly bush from proven winners they are just an amazing plant so we have two on the front front side of the arbor and then two on the back side i added in the sweet little vincas to have a great little po annual pop of color um, and this sweet little thing right here i know right now is not really much anything to look at this is a perennial salvia that jerry actually propagated at a workshop at Plant Delights in Raleigh. Oh my goodness. That would have been 10, 11 years ago, Jerry? I mean, it was a long time ago. This is Diane. So Diane is a kind of a low, I'll say moundy, weeping um, perennial salvia with just gorgeous hot pink blooms on it. So we were able, when we dug it up, when mom and I moved it, we were able to get three different sections out of it. Um, then we have um, the Persian Shield. We talked about that. The Persian Shield is running through here. Um, this is that other Blue Jangles. This is a fun shrub. I know I talked about this before, but this is Jukebox. Jukebox is another evergreen shrub from Proven Winners. And that'll get me, I've got three of them in here. Um, just some nice structure even in the winter time. It's just a fun, different kind of funky shape, different leaf on it, just a fun plant. And then of course my roses are coming along, the Generous Gardener. These are the David Austin roses. They are coming up. I'm getting ready to get my second flush of blooms on them. I have had to watch the Japanese beetles on them. I think it's time to reapply my rose care on these things because those Japanese beetles are trying to eat my roses. So coming on down through here, um, you can see like this is my this is my second Diane salvia and you can see that she's struggling a little bit. I think as long as that she keeps being well watered and kind of protected and if I can make her last through this season, I think she'll come back. So again, I know because this poor thing had gotten really kind of destroyed when I was moving her, um, but she'll bounce back and do just fine. Um, this is the third one. Then coming over here, this is the section that gets that really intense hot afternoon sun. So we have the gardenia from Southern Living. They sent this to us last fall, I'm trying to remember. This is why I put my tags in the ground. Oh, foolproof. So this is the foolproof gardenia. Um, again, my main goal for this season with my perennials and my shrubs is basically to keep them alive. I'm planting this at the end of June, end of July. If I can keep everything alive this season, then I know in subsequent seasons and years that they will take off and grow and be very happy. So that is my goal is to keep them alive. The other one that is struggling, well, there's, like I said, there's two. We had um, the perennial geranium, the Roseanne. The one in the front is doing great. This poor little, look at that, poor little set of sticks. I don't think she's going to come back. So if she doesn't come back, then that just means I get to find another plant to put there. So no problem. And then wrapping around here, um, you can see I have one of my all-time favorite perennials. This is Ascot Rainbow. And Ascot Rainbow, there's one, two, and then my third one. Now the third one over there is, is looking sad, 
but it was really tiny when we planted it and it's struggling. Ascot Rainbow though has this beautiful foliage on it, gorgeous color. It will make this nice big mound. For me, it has a fan. I love the smell of it. It's very kind of earthy. Um, it'll get nice and tall. It's an absolutely gorgeous plant. I love it. Um, then, of course, these are the plants that were already here. We have yin and yang viburnum. More evergreen shrubs from Proven Winners. These are really fun. And then this is where I have that little pocket of annuals in here. It just kind of all ties really nicely. I like the pink of the vincas because it ties in to the pink of the caladiums that are over here. So that really kind of flows in quite nicely with one another. There's a little bit of pink in that little quick fire. So as long as we have colors that blend together nicely, I think it all works. As you can see, the patio behind us it's just looking great. I know we've talked about this before. We will do a grand tour once we have it all finished. Um, there's a couple little things that we have left to do, but it's doing great. I love how the white chiffon Rose of Sharon here on the corner is doing. When Christine gave that to me, gosh, I guess it would have been two years ago now. We already kind of had plans of what we were going to do here, and I knew exactly that that's where that white chiffon was going to go. I have affectionately called her Rose of Christine now and she is beautiful. She has just started blooming. She'll get nice and tall and fill in this corner quite nicely. Um, but with this bed, you know what? This is, this is one of those beds where I have fun. I have always had fun in this bed because it's continually evolving. As the tree gets bigger, I get more shade. So I get to add more plants into it. The plants that I started with, of course, are growing, so I get to move them, divide them if I want to, take some out, put them somewhere else. The plants that we did take out of here, we took out those Japanese anemones, we took out like a crinum lily, we took out that wild ginger. All of those plants are being saved and they're gonna be moved to gardens. They're gonna be created at the nursery um, this fall and into winter. So. I'm not throwing anything away. We're not being wasteful. We're just taking you out, putting you in some holding tubs to be later planted somewhere else. That's the joy of gardening. It is always changing. It is a not a static sport. It is always changing and having fun and just going with the flow. It's just gardening. It's fun. So um, again, hope this has been some inspiration. Of course, we'll keep you updated on this. These plants here in the front are gonna get nice and big. They're going to fill in. So if you're like, well, Jenny, there's holes here or there. I'm not worried about it because they're going to grow. I plant thinking of the future, mature size, how big are things going to get. If there's little pockets that I want to fill in, I can pop some annuals in there. No big deal. This has been a fun project, a hot and sweaty project for most definitely for sure. Um, but I'm glad that it is over because now we can enter kind of more into maintenance mode instead of constantly building and, and planting and just kind of enjoy the fruits of our labor. So we, of course, we'll keep you updated on how things are going here. Um, but thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We appreciate you. Y'all have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.